Imagine, just for a moment, humans walking on the surface of another planet. What are some of the hazards that come to mind? Was falling one of them? Now, astronauts, when they are conducting spacewalks or extravehicular activities, must navigate wearing one of these large, bulky spacesuits, which has a very high mass and inertia, as well as a reduced range of mobility. If an astronaut were to fall in one of these, it's with high certainty they won't be able to get back to their feet. With supernumerary robotic limbs, or super limbs, we can now directly address this risk. In order to design a set of super limbs to assist astronauts with post-fall recovery, we first studied the biomechanics of humans when they stand from both a prone and supine position. We then repeated this experiment, but having the test subjects wear a large trekking backpack and bandages wrapped around their limbs as joints to observe its impact on their post-fall recovery trajectory. Interestingly, our test subjects all adopted very repeatable trajectories in their body's motion. Based on our observations, we were able to categorize the motion into a sequence of statically stable poses known as waypoints, where the paths between them can be modeled simply by a single force or torque applied about a specific point on the human's body. Even when test subjects were subjected to the additional mass from the trekking backpack and reduced mobility from the bandages, they still adopted the same sequence of waypoints, with the paths between accounting for motion that prioritized stability. It was time to put our findings to the test. So we went ahead and constructed an analog spacesuit platform capable of mimicking both the mass and restricted ranges of motion of NASA's XEMU spacesuit. Test subjects wearing the Super EMU demonstrated the challenges with performing a post-fall recovery. Half of our test subject pool failed to successfully stand, while the other half had to impulsively exert their limbs to overcome the inertia of the spacesuits to move between waypoints, causing highly unstable motion that could lead to falling. With the characterization we defined of post-fall recoveries, we measured the single applied force required by each test subject to successfully transition between waypoints. We then repeated that experiment, but adjusted the feedforward force gain on the impedance controller to directly see the superlimbs impact on astronauts performing a post-fall recovery.